stories I've been I'll be watching and reading stuff and I'll be noticing so many things that bother me I don't really understand why they'll do all these things so I just wanted to go through some some stuff I'm watching or maybe stuff I'm reading that take issue with. So, you know, I've been taking a, a break from One Piece, the anime One Piece, <laughs> that is his own issues, um, to watch Dragon Ball. And I'll preface this by saying I'm someone that, I think I just, the way, the way I, my mind works, I, I tend to pick things apart and, and see how they could be better, at least with stories I do that, I do that a lot with stories, I find that, uh, yeah, I just do that with stories, so with, with Dragon Ball, one thing they love doing is a lot of posturing and, and, and talking with the characters, which I think is very annoying, so it's like when you're in an action scene, a lot of stare downs. So I'm watching Dragon Ball Super. A lot of stare downs. A lot of the characters revealing their game plan and strategies. Just talking through what they're gonna do and how they're gonna do it. So and it doesn't make any sense in a combat scenario, and it's so annoying. It wastes a lot of time and so much time gets wasted on that. It, it draws out the, the situation and makes these sagas last longer than they should. So it's, it's padding, it's too much padding and nonsense showing us things that we don't need to see. Uh, with Dragon Ball Z in particular, uh, it suffered from this. The Namek Saga, I think of the Namek Saga and how when Goku was fighting Frieza. I think there was a moment where it's like, oh, the, the planet is gonna blow up in one minute or something like that. So, okay, okay, like the planet's gonna blow up in one minute, so he, he needs to beat Freezer and escape the planet before it blows up, right? Everyone else has escaped. Goku has one minute to do his business and get out. That one minute lasted like 20 episodes. Maybe not 20 episodes, but it was a lot of episodes. It was ridiculous. They really stretched it and drew it out. It was frustrating. All the talking, all the powering up, the yelling, they really drew it out. It was so unbelievably frustrating to watch. 
And that that issue was prevalent throughout the whole Dragon Ball Z series. It was so bad that they had to create another a revised version of Dragon Ball Z. They made Dragon Ball Kai. Dragon Ball Kai. Which was which was a uh, version of the series that trimmed all the fat, got rid of all that nonsense, so that you just got, you know, for the most part, the good bits. And it's baffling that they even had to do that in the first place. Why, why wasn't that the version you put out? Why did we have to sit through all that nonsense? It's unbelievable that they do that. So I think the, what they had, what it's important for these people to do, instead of having, like, okay, like, we're going to have 200 episodes, 300 episodes in this season, have 60, but make them good. You know? Have 60. If it, if, if, if it used to be a 300 episodes, make it 100. And then those 100, you make sure that the animation is quality, that the fight scenes are... And then you just trim all the fat... don't subject us to, to nonsense, right? Trim the fat. Uh, then I I finished the, the Golden Frieza saga in Dragon Ball Super and I took a break. <laughs> took a break. So now I'm watching Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen is dope, but one thing I noticed too much explaining, man. Too much explaining is ridiculous. So they have a they have a very interesting magic system, right? How the magic works in that series is, is quite interesting, it's cool. The issue is they go to such extreme lengths to explain to the viewers how the powers are working exactly what the person is doing when they're using their powers and the character will be explaining this to to the enemy i'm like why would you let them know that just keep it to yourself and then the end and then the character oh so that's how i beat you and then they they use that information to their their advantage i'm like oh my god why did you tell him if you just kept your mouth shut they wouldn't know <laughs> He's just giving them an advantage. I hate that enemies do this, man. And I think it's a, it's a way of letting the viewer know what's going on. But you know, there's other ways to do that. And you don't have to be so blatant about it. It's unbelievable. And it's too much. So, so I, watch Jap I watch anime with the subtitles. I don't like the English voiceover. It's, it's always bad. Most, not always, most of the time it's so, it's bad. So then, I have to read. So when they're doing these, uh, they, these explanations, these very lengthy explanations, these deep explanations about how the powers work, you're reading and you're like, oh my god, I'm, I didn't come, I don't, I'm not trying to study right now, okay? All these terms, all these uh, theories and whatnot, I'm like, stop it. Just fight. Stop it. In writing, there's a rule, man. There's a rule. Show, don't tell. Show, don't tell. Don't waste time explaining something. It's better to show it. When you show it, it makes more sense. And then the reader is more likely to remember that. And it's more entertaining. There's a lot of telling in Jujutsu Kaisen. A lot of explaining. And it can be a bit much, man. Not a bit. It can be very much. Concept called intellectual 
intellectual masturbation where you share your thoughts, you express an idea, you yeah, you express an idea not 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 necessarily to be helpful, not necessarily for any benefit, but just to show that look at me, I'm smart. Look at me, I'm, 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 I'm thinking very deeply. And that, that, does, that doesn't do anything except stroke your ego, except satisfy your own intellect. So we call it intellectual masturbation. So I think Jujutsu Kaisen does a bit of that. It's like, look at how technical we are and look at how sophisticated our magic system is. It's like, yeah, it is sophisticated, you're right, but show us, don't tell us. Because you, you, you're distracting us and it's, 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 it's a bit too heady and it's tiresome, man. I just want to see the action and you interrupt the action so your characters can talk to each other about the strengths and weaknesses. It's a fight. Like, shh. Don't give away your game plan. I hate that animes do this. A lot of animes do that. So it's so silly. Uh, speaking of intellectual masturbation, pirate novels leads me to my next point. Pirate novels. Pirate novels do this a lot. The ones I've been reading, at least. It's very technical. It's a very technical genre. Like a lot of these, all those go to it great lengths to describe the ships that the pirates are sailing on and you know, you, you they, they really describe the anatomy of a boat and that's not like this is so unnecessary i was reading about like how urine and alcohol can be used to maintain gunpowder when you're stuffing it into a cannon and stuff like that and i'm like I mean, this is this is interesting, but it's, how is this been? How is this pushing the story forward? How is this benefiting the novel? You know, like I just struggle to see how that's relevant. I didn't. I, I'm cool. It's cool. I'm learning. It's cool. But you know, if I wanted to learn about stuff like that, why not just read a book? dedicated to teaching me about stuff like that like it's an educational book and that's a very specific purpose i just feel like that's not your job as a novelist yes you're writing a book about pirates and about a, a period in history um so you know you do have to have some historically accurate elements there and it is good to educate your audience, but to there's limits because then it, 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 it you want to keep it within the realm of story. So what's a good story? You need to think about pacing. You need to think about immersion. You need to think about how you can keep your reader's attention. And when you when you're wasting a lot of pages describing the rigging of a boat, the motion of the ocean and how the boat is swaying as the, the very specific details about how the boat is swaying as the, the ocean undulates beneath it and so on and so forth, then you're wasting many paragraphs describing just that one thing which you could have said in a in a sentence or two. I I feel like it showcases, number one, that, that element of intellectual masturbation. I think that a lot of these writers, they do a lot of research, a lot of work to gain an understanding of the topic they're discussing, which is admirable. You know, I think when you're doing that level of research and you acquire that knowledge, you want to show people how knowledgeable you've become in this area. I get it, but it shouldn't be at the expense of your novel. Write a book about ships after you're done with your novel, where you just talk about the interesting details about boats, where you can discuss the anatomy of a boat. Look at me, 
I've studied boats. This is why I know about boats. And now you too can know about boats. Do that. Do that afterwards. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's like boats, like even with like sword fights. They'll be having a sword fight and then they, they go into the history of a certain stance. And the person that taught them this stance and, and the mechanics of the stance and whatnot and like I'm like, bro, they just fight. I just just go on with the fight, like why why is the author describing this stuff to us? It's a fight, it's some it's meant to flow, it's meant to be cool and and engaging and and that you can't take a break to explain where his foot is and like like it's uh, here's how I'll put it right it's like these are the details are described right the motion of the character how the body's positioned and stuff like that that's important information where they go wrong I think in my opinion they expand on that way too much so something that should be a paragraph at most is now a whole page. It's unnecessary details. You know, it's lack of discipline, man. Like as a as a as a writer, you need to have the discipline to be like, that's not necessary. I'll remove that. I can trim that down. That's too long. That's too short. You need the discipline to do that as a writer, like. But a lot of the time it's trimming, trimming, trimming. That's the painful part. I think adding can be easy, but trimming can be painful because you might be in love with the concept. You might be in love with your prose, your diction. And you're like, I don't want to mess with that. This is a beautiful written paragraph. But then it's like, okay, but how much of that is, is necessary to the story, you know? Yeah, with these pirate novels I'm reading, I just notice uh, sometimes they, they get a bit too technical and uh, too heady. You wanna you wanna strike a balance. You wanna challenge your reader, teach them new words, teach them new concepts, teach them facts about history, so on and so forth. But also remember that this is a story. This is not a history book. This is not a book about boats. The anatomy of a boat. This is not a, a book about the history of sword fighting. In a sword fight, we just wanna see the characters fight. We don't need all this extracurricular nonsense, all these extra details. So you do have to try that balance and keep stuff like that in mind. How can I take what I've learned, all this research I've done, and incorporate it in such a way that it creates a cohesive, engaging exciting story not a boring uh, drawn out uh, overly intellectualized one you know again bands you want a fair bit of challenge but remember that it's also entertainment that's all I'm saying it is, it's easier said than done. It's easy to criticize. It's harder to actually execute. So I'm hoping that with my novel that I'm writing, I can uh, deliver on, on a lot of these ideas that I'm putting forth of, of being minimalist, of being disciplined. We'll see. We shall see. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.
you know what I like to pray at the end of all my videos? You know what I like to pray at the end of all my videos just to impart blessing and peace and all that good stuff. So dear God, thank you for the sins that you're watching this right now. Thank you for making me more and you need things that you're guiding them. What a great part towards peace and prosperity. Towards peace, 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 peace. And prosperity. Thank you that uh, you are blessing them with amazing people. Amazing, amazing people who take care of them and have their best interests at heart. And that you're maintaining the ones that are there as well. And that they're, they're, this, because of that, these people, this individual is being, is having the best brought out of them. They're living the best life. So, uh, also bless them with many things to be grateful for. And remind them of the things they already have. So that through the spirit of gratitude, they can attract more blessings. Good health, long life, and happiness over this individual, over the people they love. In my name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you.